Hello, I'm Stephen Lachanini from the Victorian Infectious Diseases Reference Laboratory and today I'm here to talk to you about Hepatitis B and antiviral drug resistance. The first question I'm often asked about resistance is, well, how do you define antiviral drug resistance? Well, antiviral drug resistance reflects the reduced uh, susceptibility of the virus to the inhibitory effect of the antiviral compound. And we know in Hepatitis B that um, antiviral drug resistance comes about from a process of adaptive mutations during our antiviral therapy. And in Hepatitis B we've identified six major factors that contribute directly to antiviral drug resistance. And on this slide we see this is shown at high replication rates, the low fidelity of the viral polymerase, the selective pressure or the potency of the drug, the genetic barrier of the virus to the nucleoside analogues, and what we mean by genetic barrier is the number of mutations associated with um, uh, that particular drug that result in drug failure, the role of replication space or, or, or liver turnover, and finally, the virus pays a price for resistance. And so the fitness of that particular drug resistant mutant will affect and shape the pattern and the prevalence, the rate of, of antiviral drug resistance. Now, typically in hepatitis B, um, it's important that we all speak the same language. And in the um, case of resistance, it's uh, absolutely critical that our case definition for drug failure due to drug resistance, we all agree upon. The, the indications for the emergence of antiviral drug resistance include increasing viral load of greater than one log international units per mil. All of the clinical practice guidelines have accepted this case definition of drug failure due to drug resistance. And this case definition is, is assumed that uh, the physician is doing relatively frequent monitoring for, uh, for HBV DNA in patients on antiviral therapy, ensuring that the patients are taking their medicine, the compliance is, uh, is good, and that the drug is actually working. So the, kit, the critical factor is indeed that we see a good drop in viral load down to a nadir of preferably uh, below the limit of detection of a PCR-based assay. Therefore, failure of that drug is when we would see a one log increase in viral load. Other factors can be used to uh, identify uh, drug resistance, such as identification of known genotype, genotypic markers of drug resistance within the viral polymerase, the target of the antiviral drug, such as primary resistance mutations, the old YMDD or the M204I, and secondary compensatory mutations such as the 180 or the 173. Unfortunately, increasing um, or rising levels of serum ALT and clinical deterioration are very late signs, uh, indications of the emergence of drug resistance. So the clinical practice guidelines clearly have adopted the one log rule to define drug resistance. Typically what we see in um, the, if you like, the dynamics of the emergence of drug resistance in a patient treated with lamivudine is shown on the next three slides. Here you have a, a patient treated over 42 months and you can see that with the initiation of lamivudine therapy, the viral load goes down three or four logs as shown by the blue line. Um, unfortunately, it's not to the below the limit of undetectability in a PCR assay. The patient still has roughly about just under four logs of HBV DNA. The serum ALT normalised pretty promptly and right underneath the uh, time uh, axis we can see uh, the sequence readout from the viral polymerase for codon 180, 204 and 207. We know that the signature mutation for lamivudine is the 180, 204 uh, and the 204 with the, being the major signature mutation. The 204 is the YMDD that is typically seen both in HIV as well as in hepatitis B. And this is a methionine or an M to a, either a V or an I. Now typically with the 180 associated resistance mutation, we see a typically a V change there. And you can see what's happening in the first six months of therapy, uh, the polymerase changes, uh, there are none. And then, but in the, uh, after uh, 12 months, we're starting to sort of see pressure on the codon 180. And the L is a 50-50 mixture with M. And then typically by two years now, the 204 change is starting to, to, to shift and the methionine is becoming a valine. Now we've got the 207 code on there as a reference point for, uh, that's not associated with lamivudine failure and that what should not change or will not change during the course of this investigation. But you can see that by year two, we're already getting evidence of genotypic resistance to a lamivudine.
The next sequence of events following the detection of, or the uh, uh, emergence of uh, these genotypic markers of, of, of signature resistance mutations associated with lamivudine resistance in the viral polymerase, we now start to see the viral load creep up. And initially it starts to go slowly uh, over the next six months, but then it rapidly accelerates. And you can see that by, um, from month 30 onwards, the 204 now is now becoming more of the, the 204V is becoming the dominant species and you'll see a rapid rebound of viral DNA. Now the case definition shown in that last slide is greater than one log increase and that constitutes the case definition for drug failure. Now associated with that viral load increase, some months, often six to even eight months after uh, the viral load has broken through from the nadir of a greater than one log increase, the um, serum ALT or the other transaminases start to, start to rise up as well. And uh, also if we did a liver biopsy, and I'm not saying that we would, but if we did, then you would see a significant worsening of the liver disease and all of the benefit obtained with the uh, use of this drug in that first 12 to 18 months, all the benefit associated with the use of that antiviral agent is now lost because of the emergence of drug resistance, the return of replication, and unfortunately uh, the, um, the liver disease was, progresses and worsens. So resistance to antiviral therapy compromises our treatment goals. Development of resistance has a negative impact on all of the goals of chronic hepatitis B therapy. We see virological breakthrough, ALT elevation, and sometimes even ALT flares. Unfortunately, we see decreased hepatitis B E antigen seroconversion, these resistant vari variants can be archived in the liver in the form of a CCC DNA. They never go away. Now, because of the unique genetic arrangement of the hepatitis B genome, the, the polymerase uh, changes uh, uh, do alter the envelope so that the, the hepatitis B surface antigen. So unfortunately, resistant viruses, if they're transmitted, may escape vaccination. Um, and, uh, and finally, the emergence of resistance will lead to the progression of liver disease, We've seen many examples of hepatic decompensation and we're now starting to see more evidence of hepatocellular carcinoma due to the emergence of antiviral drug resistance. So as well as compromising our treatment goals, the emergence of resistance also limits our future treatment options. In terms of um, resistance compromising our treatment goals is best ex uh, exemplified by the Liao study published in New England Journal of Medicine. This study was um, uh, carried out in a group of uh, patients with cirrhosis and the endpoint was disease progression. You can see that uh, in untreated patients, just observed over the two to three years of the study, roughly 20% of the patients progressed, which fits in with the natural history of chronic hepatitis B. When lamivudine was used and there was no emergence of resistance, only 5% of patients progressed. But if lamivudine resistance emerges, uh, as shown in the purple line, then you can see that all the benefits obtained with uh, the initial application of lamivudine are rapidly lost and the lamivudine resistant patients start to catch up with the untreated patients, therefore negating the actual application and use of lamivudine at all.